All righty, be at one o'clock. It is time to open the board meeting of the Klickitech County Board of Commissioners. Let the record show all three commissioners are pleasant, present. Uh, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Thank you. I would entertain a motion on the business agenda. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve the business agenda as presented. And I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second to approve the business agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right, motion passes. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we approve the commissioner meeting minutes uh, from November 13th and November 20th, 2022. Um, I will step down and second that motion because I don't know that you were here there that you want in on this vote or not in no, on go this ahead. vote. So mm -hmm. I will step down and second the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, motion passes. Thank you, sir. Uh, that moves us into citizen comment. Citizen comment is an opportunity of members of the public to inform the board about your views on issues. This is not a time or place for dialogue or debate with the board members. If you would like to have a conversation with any commissioners, please call or email that commissioner. At this point, I'd like to go over some uh, basic ground rules uh, that include the values and behavior that everyone will be expected to adhere to if they choose to give public testimony. Uh, please be respectful. Uh, remember that, pe of, that people of goodwill can disagree with your perspective. Disagree without being disagreeable. Uh, be civil. Please do not engage in disruptive, discourteous, threatening, disparaging, or otherwise uncivil behavior. You will have up to three minutes to speak. We do have a new clock on the Zoom, so hopefully that helps. Uh, to ensure the opportunity of all the members of the public, each person may only address the board one time. Lastly, please give your name and location for the record at the start of your testimony. Uh, does anybody in the room have public testimony? Come forward, sir, and use the podium over there, if you will. Uh, name and location for the record. Adrian Bradford, uh, Lyle resident. and. I, since I only have three minutes, I may read some of this because I, otherwise I wax prolific, I'm told. So uh, as a, speaking as a citizen and a regional business person, I believe that many of the issues that are affecting Click Attack County's growth and success, there are two in particular that are key. Now, those two are replacement of the White Salmon Hood River Bridge and the upgrade of our Columbia Gorge Regional Airport. Now, when I say upgrade to the airport, I'm speaking about both facilities and management. Not only am I concerned with the minimal growth of that overall airport, but from my associates who operate aircraft, for us, I get comments how poorly the airport is being managed. If management is a visible problem, then oversight of that management is likely the base problem. I've been so concerned, I took the time to review airport-related documents and files as I could find them for details on the problems, and I was shocked to find so many examples of these problems. Commissioners for our county and the overall regional service area, our airport needs to move forward, and it's not moving forward. Now, I believe our first step should be better and more teamwork between the professional airport management, specialized water providers, and the equity overseers, teamwork. And my research indicates these three human entities currently may have very, very little team effect or effort. So as a priority, I urge you, if she is willing to appoint Commissioner Zoller as our Klickitat County representative on the airport board as soon as possible. As it is our and her district, and she has the proven team player 
consensus developer skills to improve upon this critical issue. To further document airport mismanagement oversight, I submit to you, I will submit to you example, an example uh, from the airport board's own official priorities list uh, on the second page, which I will provide for you. In fact, maybe I should just give that to you now. Should I hand that to the secretary? Your choice, yes. If you'd like to see us, please give it to the clerk. She'll print copies. And... Here's a copy of what I'm sending across the top. Do you need these copies back, sir? Pardon? Do you need these copies back or? I do not. Perfect. I think maybe the top copy has got scribbling on it. That may be my copy. You can give it back to me if you will. So the airport vision and priorities, this is official. This is their published airport board prioritized priorities and prioritized goals. One, two, and three talk about development. That would mean physical development at the airport. Thank you, sir. Your time has expired, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, leave that with us. We will go over it and look it over. Thank you very much. And thank you for serving and good success for 2023 year. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, we'll go to citizen comment online. I see one hand raised, Gabrielle Gilbert. Uh, please, uh, we know your name. Can you give us a location for the record? And you have three minutes, ma'am. I am in Fruit Valley. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, Commissioner Zoller um, on her tenure and much success. Uh, this comment is directly to the economic development and to the growth of Klickitat County, and that is in relationship to the need, the desperate need for child care. I look to the county commissioners to um, make an effort to solve this problem and start some sort of movement towards the goal of accessible, available, and affordable child care in Klickitat County. You can read on Goldendale Happenings, um, young mothers who are seeking work and um, asking to be able to bring their toddlers with them because they're looking to be employed but have no childcare. And so it is vital to the growth of this community as well as to retaining your brain drain, not losing a brain drain of your workers that you have for the county by getting child care addressed in this calendar year. If 40 children of county workers is needing child care, then this is an issue that has um, long been ignored and can no longer be ignored. And child care is infrastructure and it needs to be addressed in a developing way as you would any kind of infrastructure in the county, the airport, the roads, the water, um, the uh, services that the county provides. And um, I am looking for the county commissioners to have conversations with state representatives, Chris Corey, Gina Mossbrucker, and Senator Curtis King on how we're going to get dollars from the state, how we're going to get grant dollars um, put into this county so that you can start building childcare so that we can have it in the county for the growth and development that um, is important for the county and for families to be able to not have to make a decision about whether or not they're going to have two family members working or one family member working and what that means economically for dis, um, disposable cash that comes into the community and into the community businesses. So childcare, it has to be on the front burner and it can no longer be ignored. And it has to be part of um, a government for the people, by the people, and service to make lives better for people in the county. Thank you for your time. And I look forward to this year in having these conversations about what we're going to do to get uh, child care in Click Attack County in a meaningful way. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gilbert. Uh, back in the room, anybody in the room have any citizen comment on any issue pertinent to county business or county operation or things that happen inside of this county? Uh, I see none. We'll go back online. I see a hand raised. Sherry, name uh, and general location for the record, please. Good afternoon, Commissioners Sherry with, um, and Hewsome. 
I'd like to welcome Commissioner Zoller to your new position. I have um, great hopes for a new year and some new thoughts on the way that our county can be um, driven for its future and for the benefit of it, the county's future. So, you know, I have had an opportunity to speak to you, Ms. Um, Commissioner Zoller, and I, I have a lot of faith that you care deeply, deeply for this county's future. And I understand you care deeply for its beauty and its natural resources that we possess in this county. And with that said, I hope that this is the year our county can start to seriously discuss industrial solar and where it is located in our county. Um, I did see Commissioner Senator King has a energy plan that talks about industrial solar being cited on agricultural land and the harm that it can do. So hopefully with the backing of our state with some common sense of where and how much industrial solar we allow to be put in Klickitat County. I hope that this is the year and the dedication from our leading three commissioners that we will write solar ordinances to protect the county's future. And as I've spoke about before, these are, these are foreign entities that are coming into our county. And when they site these large industrial solar complexes on agricultural land, studies have been shown that it wrecks the land forever, never to be farmed again. And I think that is serious for us to think about in the protection of the agricultural land for people to eat and cows to grange. And let's not forget about basically, I'll say it, the elephant in the room, they're ugly. Have you seen Lund Hill? I don't think anybody in Goldendale wants to look out and see 10,000, 14,000 acres of nothing but 14 foot high glass panels across the landscape. So I do have a lot of hope that this year is the year we can seriously talk about it. Other counties are putting moratoriums in place. They're protecting their county lands and let's protect Click Attack County. It's a beautiful, beautiful county with its mountains and its rolling plains. So I hope that this is the year and also with short term rentals, if an ordinance could be wrote for short term rentals, we can write an ordinance for solar, industrial solar, large scale industrial solar. And I'd like to be a part of that conversation in the workshop for short-term rentals. And I'd like to know if you, if you can answer, can uh, the public be involved with the developing of ordinances of short-term rentals as I have one that is located as my neighbor and I've had documented um, police reports and problems with them. So I appreciate your attention. I see my time is up. Thank you for the clock on the screen. And I look forward to having a positive year as we grow in Clickstack County. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bosquet, and I would also like to thank you for noticing the clock on the screen and recognizing the clock on the screen. I think that's important as long as, um, along with what you had to say, uh, which I'm sure we will address as we go forward. Uh, anybody in the room have citizen comment they would like to say? Anything, talk about the weather, birds in the sky, nothing. We have crickets in the room. Anybody online have any citizen comment for us today on this first day of the new year for a new board of commissioners? I Me. see Ruby un unmuted herself. Go ahead, Miss Ruby. I just wanted to say to Commissioner Zoller, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> so you're at a good pond. I, uh, I can't wait to watch you excel for our district. So. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you, ma'am. And for those uh, that want to know, Ruby lives north of Goldendale up here in District 2. So. In the barn. Lori is <laughs> Lori is her commissioner. Well, we all are, but. Um, any other comment in the room? Seeing none still online, any comment online? 50 participants were having a good turnout. Anybody online? I do see 7211. Um, are you unmuted, sir? And are you looking to speak? This is Greg Wagner with Seats. There are 483 short term rentals in the county. Mr. Anderson is an operator of an unpermitted short term rental. There are two code complaints filed against him. 
He has not followed the county's established process to obtain the required conditional use permit for his short-term rental. When that process is followed, the SRT, STR has complied with all the county codes and has been approved for operation. George, the code compliance officer, has been told by the planning director, Mr. Anderson is required to have a conditional use permit. Mr. Anderson has yet to start the county required process to obtain the conditional use permit and continues to operate his unpermitted short-term rental. He has not he should not be allowed to continue operating his short-term rental until he has a conditional use permit. As a leader of the county, Mr. Anderson should be required to follow the rules. A leader leads by example and avoiding the required process for the conditional use permit is not a good example. Mr. Anderson has created a conflict of interest and Mr. Anderson should recuse himself from any discussions or decisions concerning short-term rentals or conditional use permits until he complies with all the county codes and resolves the code complaints against his unpermitted short-term rental. That's what a good leader would do. So I'm asking you, Mr. Anderson, you need to start recusing yourself from any discussions or decisions on short-term rentals or conditional use permits until you comply with the process. I ask that you trust the process. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wagner, for your comments today. Uh, we'll go back in the room. I'm hoping somebody else will go test out our new microphone platform to make sure that it works. So um, I'll start calling your names. I'll start pointing. It, Dave Barta, come forward, sir. <laughs> Dave Barta Goldendale. I'm just here to test their microphone. I want to wish you all a happy and productive new year with the new board and um, looking forward to good things. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barta. Hopefully everybody online is able to hear people out of our new microphone. Uh, we'll go back online again. Anybody online who hasn't spoken before would like to speak for citizen comment today. Fifty-two people. There's got to be somebody else out there. Somebody's got a comment they don't like the shine off my head or something on the screen. Seeing none. Um, do my seatmates have any uh, comments they would like to make now or would you like to hold them for 125 time? I see any hands flying. Um, I'm giving you the opportunity to respond to citizen comment now, or you can choose to wait until 125, which is our designated time to respond. If there's no other comments, I can go ahead. For sure. Um, so, Mr. Bradford, thank you so much for taking the time to come today, and thank you for your kind words. And we always appreciate hearing from you. Um, Dallas Port is crucial to our economic development, and the airport has so much potential. And uh, I just want to see that project become what it can be. And I also want to see all of those partners working in unison and being happy with each other and being open, transparent, and moving forward together to get that created for the Dallasport community and for our county, our whole regional county. And Gabby, uh, thank you for calling in again this week. Uh, thank you for your kind words. and. Uh, you know my commitment to the day of care program and I will be there and I'll be in contact with you. If you have other contact information you'd like me to have, you can go to the county website and send that to my now official Lori Zoller email at uh, Click Attack County. I'd appreciate any contacts that you'd like me to have. And Sherry, um, I have not faltered in my commitment to the things that were your concerns uh, during my campaign. I heard you and I remember them all. And I do have a very strong personal commitment to good planning, uh, coordinated policies and public involvement. And I won't let that uh, stand down. And Ruby, thank you. Thanks for the smile today. Good to hear from you. Greg Wagner, uh, short-term rentals. It's something we are working on now at the county. We've had some conversations just beginning today. So we're starting to move forward on those issues. and 
and bring that into a positive life and get it set up and functioning. So sometimes government takes a little bit of time, uh, but we're getting there, we're starting to work on it. And Mr. Barda, thank you for testing the microphone. Wow, Mr. Barda even got a shout out. Well done, ma'am. Um, Mr. Anderson, would you have any comment? Sure, I'll start with Greg. Uh, Greg, could you get us your information on where you come up with 483 short-term rentals and can you forward that to the BOCC County email because uh, what we heard from our code compliance officer today was it was over 500. Um, one thing you should be aware of in uh, government is, is that when we are doing a legislative action, uh, it affects everyone and there's no reason to recuse yourself from a legislative action. We recuse ourselves primarily from quasi-judicial actions, which would be if there was a conditional use permit or a building permit or anything of that nature that went in front of the board, that is when we recuse ourselves. Um, as for, uh, I've emailed back with you many, many times back and forth about STRs and you make it very clear and evident we do not have county codes regarding short-term rentals. Um, when it comes to, that is why we are having the discussion, that's why we began the discussion in 2020 and into 2020, early 2021 on a uh, short-term rental ordinance. Um, and it sounds like that is going to be a priority from the board this year. And so I look forward to working with the board with regards to a short-term rental ordinance. Uh, with regards to myself having a short-term rental, I will once again say that is in a permitted single family dwelling in a area that is zoned for permitted single family dwelling units. Uh, whether I rent it for one night or whether I rent it for one week or one year, it is still a single family dwelling and that's what its purpose is. Um, whether you're making money off of it as rent or not makes no difference. Uh, but thank you for your comment as always and thank you for being uh, polite about it. Uh, with Ms. Gilbert, thank you as always for keeping child care at the forefront of our mind and I hope uh, we will see some movement with the child care um, and hopefully the child care committee this year um, and uh, with regards to uh, Sherry are you sure that the panels um, on the Lund Hill stand 14 feet tall I thought they were of the the next size lower the 14 foot tall panels or the double panels um, and I don't think they do that much anymore. But again, I've only, I've, I haven't been on site in quite some time on Lund Hill. Uh, with that, I would give the rest of my time back to the chairman. All right. And before I go on, I'll go one more time to see if there's any citizen comment in the room. Uh, we had new people show up. Any citizen comment not pertaining to something that's on our agenda currently? I'm seeing none. Um, so with that, I will go to the comments already uh, asked and answered. I think my seatmates did a very good job covering them. Um, I will, I guess, explain to everyone or remind everyone out there listening that today starts a new day. It starts a new era. Um, the board might choose to go directions on things like short-term rentals that it didn't choose to go a week ago. Um, so bear with us as we work through strategy and how we're going to uh, address issues that, that, you know, may have come before us three months ago or six months ago or six years ago. Uh, but I think you'll see a, a change from what we had previously. Um, with that, I won't address anybody in particular because I think they were already answered other than thanking everyone for their comment. Um, and go back in the room or online to see if anybody new has any comment. See none. Last chance.
You got five minutes. Somebody's got to want five minutes. We can't move on for five minutes. Somebody's got to speak. <laughs> and you're perfect. It didn't get you on the camera. You're just right out of it. Smart man. All right, well, we'll do some signing us some papers up here. If somebody's got comment, please either raise your hand, unmute yourself, uh, holler at us, uh, do something to get our attention. If not, we will sign papers for five minutes. For me, yep. Ms. Lee, the signature designation, do you want both of the chair and vice chair over here? Or just just these three items right here. Got it. Got it. Initial here to delete. You still want my initials over there? <laughs> Don't have them deleted. Uh, no, just initial here. Okay. You, need, you guys need payroll and AP. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want me twice here, it looks like. I'm your second on the DOE. Board of Equalization. Yeah, oh, Bob Moko oh, for the Board of Equals. Okay, we don't have to sign the rest of them, right? Nothing in there for you, but feel free to look them over. And I used to always check everybody's signature and pass it back on the one. That was my job. All right, almost out of time. Last chance, citizen comment.
All right, that's being 1.30. That is the end of citizen comment period. I would like to thank everybody for their citizen comment. To me, if somebody's willing to take their time to come forth and allow their elected officials to know what's on their mind, whether we agree with them or disagree with them, we have to thank them for their comment. Um, they obviously care enough to want to spend their time enough to be heard. Uh, with that, we'll move forward. We do not have any public hearings, public meetings, or bid openings today. Uh, we do have a consent agenda, and I would entertain a motion. Do we want to do that after the next bit? Or do we do that at the end? Uh, we can skip it if you would like. I was just hoping to get the bills and everything else at the same time. Oh, you're trying to do it all at the same time. All right. Um, we do have. All right. So we will skip forward ahead a little bit and do uh, Public Health Director Aaron Quinn for an update on recruiting a new public health officer. Um, I have a few candidates that are interested in health officer. And so I just need to know how you all would like to move forward with that. If you all want to be involved in the interview process, if you all want me to make my recommendations, um, the board of health does have to appoint them. So regardless, um, at the next board of health meeting, the appointment will be there, but I just need to know how you want me to proceed. Sorry, you're asking what we want to do, whether we want to sit through your interview process or whether you want, we want you to just handle it and make a recommendation to the Board of Health. Correct. Do my CMAs have an opinion? How many applicants do you have? Two. Are any of them from Clark County? No. Where are they from? Uh, one is from the Seattle area and one is from the Gorge. I'd be willing to sit in on them. Interesting. Have an opinion. Would you like to sit in on her? We don't necessarily, if we sit in on an interview, we don't necessarily have to be the ones asking the questions. We can just be in the room while she asks the questions to the public health official uh, so that we can make a more entertained and enlightened decision when it comes time for us to make a decision. Your choice. Or do you think we should sit in the room or should we just take they, let her do it and give us a recommendation? Th this position is. Uh, an employee of the board, so that's why I'm asking for your direction for this. Okay. Uh, because they're an employee of the board. Because they're an employee of the board, it might be valuable that we sit in. Yeah. Not that I don't trust who Aaron needs to work with, but I think we should have the oversight. I would agree. That's three. Okay. Can we all work with Lee on that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, ma'am. All right, we will jump forward even a little bit more before we go back back up to bills and we will uh, get a Dallasport Water District Commissioner's update on uh, Columbia Gorge Regional Airport and other issues as they deemed worthy by putting themselves on the agenda today. So I'm sure we'll hear all about whatever they have. I have my timer on, but... <laughs> You get more than three minutes. You have th no, he gets three, I have, three I have minutes. My, I have my timer on. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm letting everybody know. No, nope, you're good, sir. Listen, okay. Um, welcome to 2023, and I'm a happy camper. So, um, I'm William J. Morris, Dallasport Water District Commissioner, um, as well as an elected Klickitech County Republican PCO. Um, with me today is Bill Clark, elected Dallasport Water District Commissioner. <clears throat> and I'm also a member of the Dallasport Community Council. And working on other projects that are within, that are going on on the peninsula at the moment. I would like to draw your attention to an email I just got. Um, our state representatives just got appointed reappointed to um, their committees. And this just popped up. And so I just kind of wanted to share with you some of the state level people that we work with and what committees they're on. Gina Mossbrucker, um, Chris Corey. Uh, the announcement was made today. Uh, Gina Mossbrucker is now on the Capital Budget Committee. 
I'm very happy about that. And uh, going down through here, because there's a whole bunch of them. Community Safety, Justice, and Reentry Committee, Gina Mossbrucker is the ranking member. Consumer Protection and Business Committee, Chris Corey is the ranking member. Uh, let me see, there's a whole bunch of them. Give me a second. Uh, where else were, were they? Were? Oh, Gina Mossbrucker is now on the Healthcare and Wellness Committee at the state. Mm, yeah, we can plug in with that. I'm very happy about that. Congratulations to her. Um, look forward to working with all of them on our um, urban growth boundary issues, as I already have been. And let's see, there's a bunch of them here. So looks like that covered the mo most of them. Anyway, that email just came through. Congratulations to them. So <clears throat> all of that being said, um, Lori, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. And, you know, when you and I were out on the campaign trail, people were coming up to us and they were energizing us and they were, they, they were so grateful and positive and, and we were just poured on with that positive energy. And, you know, there was a couple of points during the campaign that it, you know, I kind of got a little overwhelmed with it. And I, and I realized that um, because we're people that care, I mean, people were thanking you and me for, for even getting out there and pounding the pave, you know. And I, and I want to say congratulations, because I haven't been able to really do that since then. And I'm very happy about this. I really, truly am. Because the urban growth boundary area, the Dallasport Peninsula in its whole, the Klickitat County Republican Party, um, the Dallasport Water District, um, those community leaders and regional leaders that are sitting behind me right now, we're all here to work with you for the benefit of Klickitat County, the, the taxpayers the voters you know when you and i were on the trail they defined the issues for us and um uh, plug into that you know i'm thrilled for you thank yeah. you i appreciate it bill I, and I, we have not gotten time to talk no we should i, I <laughs> tried well there, i mean there, there were those holidays out there <laughs> yeah. you know and as well as other things that were going on um i'm actually i'm also here to um thank all the current sitting commissioners for all the work that you have done in the past it is very appreciated by us and we look forward in a very positive manner <clears throat> to what 2023 is going to bring again we are here to help we are here to move forward um, we are here to make sure that the vision of the urban growth boundary area gets completed in its entirety that's the groundwork we're doing right now we are on the cusp of signed contracts um, that are out floating around right at the moment and these are really really exciting times for the peninsula there yeah you know mm -hmm. you know yeah. and um and i am excited about that i'm energized i'm focused Unfortunately for you, in some cases, I'm going to be here every week, if not twice a week. But you, but you know, we are going to have some fun here. Okay. And um, there's fun involved with this. There is fun involved okay. in this. I'm, I'll, I'll patiently wait, sir. Okay. Oh, because well, there is. <laughs> because I'm joking. You, you, you're 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 going to be hearing a few words that the Pioneer Finn woman had to say. Anyway, and uh, so you know, we kind of got to laugh about that too. Um. You're good. My family came here on horseback, having bought the Lewis and Clark map after it got printed. And what they could carry on horses, they came here with. So we have been here since pre-Oregon Territory days. 
It's one of the reasons we love Click Attack County and the state of Washington. Um, and that is where the driving force and focus of all of this has to be. I sit on other boards, committees, um, other than the elected ones that I do. Um, in fact, just this morning, I was gearing up for um, the class of 2023 and, and applications in order to help people get through college for Click Attack County and Goldendale specifically. Uh, last year, we issued a record number of those and a record amount of money to help to help our kids move forward. And speaking about kids and, and focus and energy, I'm very proud of what our kids did last year and over the past two years. They did not waste one minute of lockdown. Every last one of those scholarships went to kids who had AA degrees online before they even left high school. They mm. wasted not one minute. Now that is focus, that is energy, that, that, that is targeted personal growth. And I'm very proud of them. Um, and it was, it was us as elected officials and appointed people who helped drive all of that. And our, our future is secure when we get old, okay? Just, just because of how focused these kids are. So having said that, I'm here to hit the reset button with DWD and the CGRA and the peninsula, <clears throat> as well as um, other issues. I am thrilled about where we're going to go. We're focused, we're energized, we're plugged in and our vehicle is moving forward. That being said, I need to warn you that the Department of Health at the state of Washington has issued the Dallasport Water District a directive to cut the terminal complex off of water. Now, that being said, Bill, Mark, and I have not taken any action on it yet for the simple reason that we have um, Records requests out that have not been <clears throat> that have not been worked on. Uh, we had a conversation with David Quinnell about that this morning. Um, we, as water commissioners, are going to continue to do everything in our power to resolve these issues before we have to do that. We don't want to do it. The Department of Health has told us to. We now have license to do it. So just be aware. Okay, um, I obviously have a lot more time now on my hands, so watch out. Um, not that my fingers weren't dialing the whole time anyway. You guys know me. Um, we're here to solve problems and solve issues. We are your working partner, period, period. Um, there, as a team of people who are working together, there is not one darn thing we can't solve. Yeah. 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 And I know that. And I know the kind of support that I get from you guys. And I actually really, really appreciate it. Um, because we have a couple of mountains we got to move. But many hands make light work. And again, I point to the audience about the local and regional energy and knowledge that actually sits behind us here. Um, if you have any questions, I'll entertain those at the moment before I move on. Do um, do we have a copy of the directive from the I will Washington? I actually Lori um, it resides within the office at the moment. Um, I am more than happy to make sure that you get uh, when it's time an right? email yeah. copy of it. Okay, 
<clears throat> can you can you let us know why they want it turned off? Because you have illegal, unpaid for connections within the terminal complex. Um, these this is part of the um, FOIAs that we have have issued. Whose office was it? Yeah. yeah. Um, those, of course, had been issued to David Cornell in the prosecuting attorney's office, <clears throat> and they got lost somewhere between his office and Click Attack County Department of Health. So um, that phone call was, of course, was made this morning. Uh, the other thing about it is, of course, is the undersized line that is at the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport. Um, the Department of Health at the state of Washington has pulled their chainsaw out and is going, reminding us exactly what has to be. The terminal complex a realignment project, which has been on the boards for quite a while, because I've been engaged in thir for 13 years, that has that did not come to fruition, which is exactly part of the problem that's going on at the moment. What the Department of Health is now issuing to us of course, puts phase two um, at risk within the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport Business Park. That will not be approved <clears throat> um, because of these other issues. And I, I know that one by one, we'll be able to get these worked out. Um, so the phase but, two won't be approved by? I'm the sorry. Department of Health. Okay. It's on hold. Okay. Um, because because the airport well does not have a pump in it. It's not it's not pumping water to the Dallasport Water District. Uh, then for us to provide fire flow to the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport. Period. Uh, because that burden, of course, has always resided within <clears throat> the Dallasport Water District. And and again, under that contract, you know, we have met every um component of the contract when it comes to the Dallasport water district side it's one of the reasons why <clears throat> we're here we're energized we're focused and and 2023 let's go okay um in discussions with the current sitting columbia gorge regional airport board as their advisory um we have their unwavering support unanimous unwavering support about where we need to go in the future okay i would like to point out to this board that tennyson engineering is the engineer of record for the dallasport water district and the commissioners are william j morris bill clark and mark peppel and we are the people elected in authority and we are the people you need to be talking to not that you hadn't been, but I just want to remind everybody of that. While components of the contract are still sitting out there, um, we do have the landfill gas grant fund vessel issue that we've applied for. We do, in fact, have an expectation of the Board of County Commissioners at Click Attack County <clears throat> to invoke that and help us get that done because the cherry dishwasher, as we call it, uh, <laughs> the cherry dishwasher does in fact strain our system uh, during cherry washing season. And we also have been informed by them that they are going to start washing other fruit uh, within the very near future. We are fully prepared at this particular point if action is not taken regarding um, the count of connections within the terminal complex to invoke to invoke the um, quit claim deed on the water rights over to the Dallasport Water District in its entirety so that we can then move forward and start drilling over the wells, which of course will be at your cost. While I wouldn't necessarily want to go there, we will if we have to. 
We have in fact engaged an attorney, Tom McDonald in Tacoma, or Olympia. He is our attorney of record, of course. Um, the attorney bills are mounting regarding the contract and you are also, of course, financially responsible for that under, under the contract. And we are, we are attempting to limit, severely limit that at the moment until um, we can have some kind of working session, possibly on Thursdays with you, so that point by point by point, we can go through every one of these and, and we can get your questions answered and, and we can get everybody plugged in mm -hmm. to the right post office box, if you will. We are committed to the resolution of this issue in 2023 preferably by june 1st preferably by january 1st oh whoops that was already yesterday. Ooh. <laughs> you are allowed to go to february mom told me i could tell you that so <laughs> my, my cattle prod only works on some people on some people uh, it doesn't work on very oh well. well no you're you're look, look you guys you're, you're absolutely right about that by the way i'm, I'm glad we can find the humor in it but um this one of the reasons I want this working session and these working sessions on Thursday is because we can continually update you about the communications that we're having with people like Jonathan Cara, the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport, other entities on the peninsula, um, certainly the investors who are now 100% engaged and, and they're throttled up. Okay. Um, because we, of course, have been working with them for 25 years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And these are, the, again, these are really exciting times um, because they're within seconds of putting ink to paper. And I'm really happy about that. Um, anything that happens within the urban growth boundary area um, benefits every taxpayer in Klickitat County because we we are going to be able to provide a, a massive amount of tax base that will then limit everybody else's taxes. Also giving you the funds to work on other critical infrastructure, uh, childcare being one of them. Please know, I, I think that childcare is a critical infrastructure piece. We have to be able to get people back into the workplace. Um, <clears throat> as well as um, the road department and, uh, and upgrading situations on the peninsula when, when it comes to roads. Of course, that's all part of the package that's coming from the investors, most of it. Um, they have in fact broken ground in Mountain View Estates behind the post office on Third Avenue, the first house is being built. I would like to point out to you as commissioners that house is listed for $675,000. So please make note of the kind of tax base that you're going to be able to have at your disposal. There's 25 homes uh, scheduled to be built there. The other 100,000 square foot lot was put on the market for $1,750,000 uh, on Friday. Uh, to an inv um, so they floated that. So there's a lot of movement going on. Coming back to the Dallas Port Water District. Um, while I know the appointment to the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport is still up in the air, I wish to encourage you, Lori, to come and work with us. Because I, I, I am just really energized about this. And, and we're go-to people on the peninsula. We, we have other issues going on. The, the failed fire levy is still one of them that's out there floating around that has still yet to be addressed or resolved by the assessor's office. I will be over talking to Billy about it um, probably, um, well, it'll be next week. Uh, the fire district will be coming um, to do a presentation about that within the next a uh, couple of weeks 
And essentially, you're going to see Dallasport people here every week now until we get it done. Um, every last one of the issues that Dallasport Water District has is solvable. And Bill, Mark, and I look forward to working with you to solve every one of them in lightning fast speed. We really do. And on a personal note, for, for 64 years, I have dreamed and worked for what we're going to get in 2023. And my mother worked for 93 years, 10 months and 17 days. And on her deathbed, she reminded me that I needed to reach out and help guide and direct and support you. Lori, and that's my mom. Of course, Dan, she said, I have to leave the chainsaw at home. Anyway, <laughs> you know, that's, that, that, see, that's the funny part. Because she so loved this county and everybody in it. And of course, she was the one who was reminding me that that every last issue that has to be dealt with here is a small, it's a small problem. And that if there's an elephant in the room, many hands make light work because you just go in there and chop it up and chop it down. We do, you know, Bill, Mark and I have <clears throat> in our meetings, certainly had the discussion about whether or not we were going to end up having to engage an attorney for litigation for this upper well contract. And we have held off, but we are to the point now that unless we see some movement before the end of February, so I'm going to give you two months. Um, we are going to continue to hold off until our February meeting which is why I would like to start scheduling the uh, Dallasport Water District Commissioners to come in front of you, because one by one, I think we can get it solved by the end of February. You know, we're gonna need probably an hour a week, maybe, um, or less, I would hope. I, I, as a commissioner, as well as Bill and Mark, are disturbed about the fact that our FOIAs are not being responded to, uh, not only by the county um, or the prosecuting attorney, departments in the county, the city of the Dalles. Uh, Bill, Mark, and I, just like you, um, are going to be issuing assignments at our January meeting. One of us will be going to meetings such as the Board of County Commissioners at Klickitat County, the City of the Dalles, the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport, as well as other <clears throat> regional um, meetings that we need to be in. One of those, of course, is the uh, Gorge Commission. We have to appoint somebody to go to that because they're trying to flip stuff around on us. I am... Um, Again, I'm energized, I'm focused. I, I am willing to get this done. I think that the Dallas Port Water District, our employees, I wanna pat them on the back. They, they're world-class, it's why we hired them. They're getting the job done. I'm very, very proud of them. Scott Dixon, Chelsea Wooderson, and um, Austin Wilson. and Mr. Wilson and the kids, you know, have a new one. And again, we have a we have a just world class team of people at your disposal to solve problems. At this point, I'm. If you have any questions, I'm going to take those 
or comments because I do have a couple other things I need to say. So. Um, I'll take a sec. Um, I, I think you're right when, when you said if people just sit in the same room and have a discussion, they can uh, bite at the apple one bite at a time, essentially. Uh, and it has always been my opinion, uh, which this is a new board, so it will be a new discussion, um, that we need to have those workshops where we do look at those issues or grievances one at a time, uh, walk our way through them, talk our way through them, get our way to resolving them. If there's something we can't, um, boom, we pass. Uh, we move on and look at a different bite of the apple. Uh, look at the next issue, we'll come back to that issue. So hopefully we can at least be pro ongoingly productive um, in, in fixing some of that. And I think some of that might start this afternoon when this board has its first round of open discussions on what it wants to see and how it wants to move forward in strategic planning and workshops and, and that kind of stuff as we get around this afternoon. And, and I, I appreciate that, Dan, because of course, now that we have this directive from the Department of Health, <clears throat> it of course directly affects what the community college is gonna do. <clears throat> and um, can I hold you up there for a quick second, sir? I see our prosecutor is uh, online with his hand up. So I would like to recognize the prosecutor to speak if he so chooses. I appreciate that, uh, Chair uh, Christopher. I just want to correct the record that I was not the primary recipient of any public records request. I was copied on a message from uh, November. I've received multiple messages from Mr. Dixon um, on behalf of the water uh, board in the last 30 days. I, I reached out to him today with a point blank request asking him why he was copying me on all these messages. Um, I'm not related to the finances. Uh, I don't make decisions related to the financial aspects of the county. I've told Mr. Dixon that multiple times. I don't process public records requests. I'm not in possession of any permits. It's, nothing got lost. Uh, there was uh, the health department for Mr. Dixon that there was no responsive documents, I believe, back in November. So any notion that there was uh, something got lost or that we're withholding information is simply not accurate. I've told Mr. Dixon multiple times, I am not the primary contact. I am not the policymaker related to the county's re uh, relationship with the water board. I'm an attorney. I'm here to advise the board. So I really uh, appreciate our respect that my name um, stopped getting uh, repeatedly dragged into this. I've told Mr. Dixon this multiple times. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. Uh, we will go back with Mr. Morris. Um, I appreciate other, other issues, sir. I appreciate Mr. Cornell um, and and his position. Um, he he was copied on. He is correct about this. He was cc'd on everything. Um, and no, da David Cornell is not the primary responsible party for records requests. We have issued them multiple times, of course, to departments. And this is where you as county commissioners are gonna to have to crack the whip um, in, in making sure that those departments are complying with RCWWAC. What when departments What departments exactly are you, uh, have you turned in requests for? Department of Health, Public Works. I submitted it to the prosecuting attorney and to- You submitted it to the prosecuting attorney. And? I got back was from the health department. There was no plumbing permits taken out, but the, um, the letter that was sent to the attorney and um, I CC to members that we still need to count how many people or how many connections are on the back side of the meter because he's subtracting that from us. Um, so that uh, I mentioned that we could get a hold of. I talked to. Um, I'm gonna. Um, Time out you and cut you off just because I just realized I've been letting you speak for like two minutes and you don't have a mic in front of you and nobody online has any idea what you're saying. <laughs> so, so if you have anything further, 
Uh, you are welcome, but come forward to a microphone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's what we needed. Uh, again, um, we're we're here to work with with you for the benefit of the taxpayers, voters of Klickitat County, and for the benefit of the whole county. And and again, thank you for that. I appreciate it because though that's one of the primary things that we've needed. <clears throat> Um, we are going to advise you that we will be doing, uh, DWD will be doing an inspection of the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport to try to get to the bottom of, of some other stuff. What other <clears> stuff? Looking, looking, well, the how many sewer connections they have over there. There were no permits, of course, drawn for, for water. Um, and, of course, these are issues that we're going to be discussing in workshop with you. My uh, one of my first 2023 focuses is, of course, with the um, new hangar that the Columbia Gorge Community College wants to build. And we are going to be having a discussion with the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport Board <coughs> about whether the FBO will give up um, a Jim Riley loop spot for it to go into because that would allow them to move forward with building that building because that's phase one phase one is connected phase one is not where the issue lies anyway it's the terminal complex and phase two is where the is where the issues are and you know that's the kind of solutions that we're going to bring to this um, not having been able to um, have a discussion with the fbo at the end of this last year uh, that's one of the first steps that we're going to be taking because uh, we have to move that thing forward. It's been delayed. Unfortunately, <clears throat> there's money out there that's being floated for it, uh, federal money. And so it, that that is kind of one of the solutions to the problem we have <clears throat> because f phase two development, of course, is has to be planned out. We cannot go out there and bubble gum and bailing wire that thing um, on the on the east side back out there because there's going to be a lot of construction that has to go in <clears throat> with other taxiways and roads and infrastructures. So would would you guys be interested? My seatmates be interested right now um, to I don't know if our next workshop um, Thursday has time it might be the second one in I, January. I, I, actually dan i can't do this thursday i'm sorry then, da, it da, would be the next one it has to be a different day than on a thursday is what no 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 it's not this no, thursday. no yeah just not this thursday. right so it's i'm not, talking about our second thursday workshop in january that would end up being on that's the 12th right um so our first workshop is the 12th it is i think that one's probably full and that was my question Okay, it has to be done, done by three. So, uh, actually, two to three. Have, actually, that, that's perfect. There, no, it, it would need to be. Ideally, it would need to be done. Uh, I think that. Um. So the second. Oh, sorry, I had the wrong date. Anyway, so it's the twenty sixth, January twenty sixth. Because there's nothing available the nineteenth. Correct. I have legislative steering. Oh no, that's fine. No, no. I'll be in Olympia that day. Well, the, seriously, I was trying to decide if I could make it back for an afternoon, but yeah. No, 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 <laughs> no tickets, no tickets. Not during the. Um, <laughs> not during. No we tickets. Know. We can try to work it out through leave. That's the appropriate way. <laughs> yeah, that would be my take. Is the twenty sixth? No, I, we're two to three. The and 26th. Then, and from, then if you guys essentially bring a like list of grievances um, kind of a thing and let's see if we can sit down and just work one through the next one and see how far we get. Scheduled. Okay. Two to three. Scheduled. I think they were talking about the 12th, which, yeah. We could get a start at 
We're always running ahead. I anyways. apologize. Okay, so the 12th, 2 to 3, scheduled. And the 26th, 2 to 3, scheduled. <laughs> <laughs> Better put that one as tentative, but yeah, no, I, I, it's, no okay, it's, it, it's okay by me. No, nope. um, because I can't imagine we're done in an hour on one day. So, well, no, at and, least that's to well get us working towards started. a solution. Just mm -hmm. we, we just yes, I got to get started here. Uh, there may be some parts of some things that there may be a disagreement on, and we need to get legal counsel. And there may sure. be some things that you have disagreement on, and you have to go get legal counsel. But at least we can work on at least something in trying to get to a solution uh, that that works for us. So, okay, we're gonna go get this done. Mm -hmm. We're gonna try. We're go no, we're gonna go get this done. Yeah, we're gonna go get this done. And so I, I look forward to the twelfth and the twenty sixth, as well as the tenth, seventeenth, twenty fourth, and thirty first. <laughs> Um, because as a heads up, you guys need to know that, of course, the fire district is coming. We, I have to pull paperwork. In fact, running across the street. Um, I'll be talking to Billy, of course, about that. Because that bond needs to kick in and, and pay. Yeah, to, to be straight up front about that, I have no idea how the it's, assessor does the assessor business. Uh, and we're taking it. We're taking it up with her. Yep. So you come over here. You can you can vent at me all you want, but I'm just going to send you across the street until my attorney tells me to write a check. That my answer is to go talk to them. Right. <clears throat> and and of course that being said, go ahead. Sorry, Mr. Anderson. You're fine. You have something? Yeah, I've got a bunch of questions. Um, and since we only get an hour and it's two o'clock now, two to three today sounds like a good start. Um, I'm a little concerned. Uh, you have something that says you're going to turn the water off to the um, airport business park, or not the, the airport complex. Terminal complex. The terminal complex. The Department of Health Directive. A Department of Health Directive to turn water off that includes a residence, something that that we are not allowed to do and you know the water businesses turn water off and why do you think resident. we're holding off jake well i'm that's this, what i'm this is why we've been trying to resolve this the whole time because we there isn't just that residence but there's the life flight that's what i'm trying bedroom to bedroom building i'm trying to ask the question when are you saying that you're planning on turning the water off and how are you going to do that for one? Because you come in and you're saying that you want to work together, but then you're saying you have a directive, which is a directive from the state government to do something. Correct. Which I, we don't want to put you in hot water, but we also know that if we have to turn the water off to includes life flight, those people can't stay in there because it can no longer be a domicile. That's correct. So I'd like to know a, of course, the directive. Um, second of all, when you plan to follow the said directive. And thirdly, I'm trying to understand um, can we get a copy, make this a public records request towards you, of all the information that you provided to the Department of Health in which they wrote this directive? Correct. Uh, I have some, some major issues with the uh, information you guys provided us at our last meeting. Uh, the first of which being um, you provided us a document that said uh, 13A.20.020. Uh, and stated that that was a Washington administrative code. And that was your reasoning and rationale for um, saying that every um, everything within the complex needs its own meter. Which was cleared with the Department of Health before we issued it. And then this is one of, this again so, is one of the reasons why between now and January 24th, when the Dallas Port Water District Board meets again, um, we are going to be in workshops with you and in front of you every Tuesday, whether it be public comment or schedule, so that these uh, RCWWAC Department of Health directives can get hammered out. The Dallasport Water District meets the 24th of January at 5.30 p.m. at the Dallasport Community Center. And while we are going to continue to work on this, between now and then with you in these workshops, we might be able to get a bunch of this resolved in, in those workshops. Mr. Morris, if I may, um, I'm surprised that you cleared that with the Department of Health. 
uh, because 13A2020 is not a Washington administrative code. Uh, we've had our environmental health department look into this and what was provided to us was the only way place we can find that is that is a city ordinance by Wilbur Washington. So I'm a little, little concerned about that that was what was provided to us as Washington Administrative Code. I can give you the Washington Administrative Code links to it, but something, because it's quite concerning because you're stating that everything within that complex needs its own meter, and that was your reasoning and rationale for it. Uh, if you actually look at the Washington Administrative Code, as well as the RCWs, under uh, C uh, slub slash V, a complex with multiple buildings served as a single connection is something that we've been operating under this entire time. With exception of the fact that you're now undersized. Uh, I do believe a three inch. Or fire flow. For and, and this, and Jake, this is part of the discussion that needs to be hammered out in the workshop. Okay, so I'm just trying to give you the information so that you can go back and do your research being on the commission. Have you given him a copy of this, sir? I'm going to give him some of it here shortly. Okay. The next thing is, as you said, that there are unmetered connections that no um, fees have been paid for, and that is the reason for this directive to shut the water off. It's part of it. Okay, I would also direct you to the 2011 agreement as well as the 2012 agreement, which clearly states and delineates with it in there that the complex and all of those buildings are grandfathered in. With exception of the newest connections since 2011. Uh, well, it was grandfathered back in 2012 with the agreement. And so since that time, we have, because we tried to do our homework, we got all those dates of when those buildings were built and around that time okay and there is only one building that has access to water that was built and constructed and it was finished in june of 2012 which is um, the permit or whatever was issued you know probably 2011 which would fall into that and so there's been no new water connections added and if they were added, those water connections would be added per our agreement in 2011 and 2012, which we still have 30 ERUs, which we can pay cash for and you pay us back because remember, you're supposed to be paying us back for those. And we have done that. At some times. We have done that. The water district did not pay, the, pay us back for the fruit processing plant and all those connections. And we couldn't pay you back at that particular point because we <clears throat> we had to do uh, um, maintenance. The landfill gas grant fund request for the additional vessels was denied. We had to, of course, put a new pump in, unfortunately. <clears throat> the old one burned up. And so, you know, those are very reasonable O&M um, situations as to why we are withholding that particular payment okay because so i'm only there, saying that there are there are other bathrooms in t hangers there are other bathrooms within the corporate hangers okay um that we have been advised about i appreciate this thank you thanks and so again again these are <clears throat> um these are issues that I would like to sit down in the workshop and resolve. I just line by line by line, go through them. And that is um, that is my plan. Um, that way, the the rest of us that don't necessarily have pen to paper, as each item gets thrown back and forth, uh, we pick one item, we stick to it. Uh, we fix it or resolve it or get to the bottom of it or whatever. And each member of your board, each member of our board is an active participant uh, and we'll, we'll get it handled. How do we do this with regards to there's also the other half of the ownership of the airport is the city council? Are we going to invite the city council up to these meetings? As we well? are actually going to be going to uh, the Dell city council meetings. Right, but if we're hammering out agreements 
because apparently there's a okay, lot of we things. are. <laughs> I wouldn't say we're hammering out agreements, we are but not. if there is a technical question on how many hookups there are in a building, I think we should be able to answer that and get on the right page with knowing how many hookups there are in a, in a complex. If they debate how many hookups, I guess they can hire an attorney. Um, and they that's, already have one. That's, that's the answer. So um, it, it, we don't need to be on the same page with the city unless the city is saying there's a different number of bathrooms right then we're saying there's and, a different number of bathrooms and we are not we don't need to get in a debate an argument and a a court briefing in the middle of a business right. meeting of the county commission correct is all and, I'm trying and, to, uh, and steer I, us away from and i appreciate that and again we are not rewriting these contracts the, i the board, can agree with the, that but i would say there's been <clears throat> maybe some selective reading and interpreting of the contract. So I would say- right. Oh no, you're right about that. Between one person and another person, this person and that person, the way they interpret the contract yeah. is different. And we may not come to those answers in a workshop because that might be down to legal opinion, which might come down to legal opinion of a judge, but maybe it doesn't. So let's try. And, um, and hang on, you got somebody in the back. Go ahead real quick. I, I, I'm give a little bit of a clarification. Um, I really appreciate this is what we've been looking for. Um, I think the missing link is the Jake's right, um, but there's called base rate. So even though that these the SDCs could be worked out, base rate is still a fifty-six dollar a month fee. So everybody who has water still has to pay a base rate, no matter if the SDCs are waived for the contract. Um, one of the, the Fruit Packers wasn't paid because we don't have a signed contract. So for you to want to have the contract um, fulfilled, once it's signed, we will be paying the rest of the STCs back. We actually asked for the $38,000 back for the ones we did pay because there isn't a signed contract. There is through the county and city, but the FAA hasn't. The, how the, um, the Department of Health got involved is he got a um, your guys' November 2nd meeting. There was a cluster meter um, request, which it can have cluster meters at the airport if that's their direction. But the letter was sent to the city attorney with a, um, what qualifies a cluster meter. It had to be engineered, the size of meter for the fire flow. And so that information was sent to the city attorney, which I could forward, I was CC'd on that myself. So um, the cluster meter from your November 2nd meeting is what generated and he's on the Department of Health, and I don't know if he's online. I requested him to go online to comment, but he was, um, the reason he was saying turn it off, as we were told, there's no permits. Nobody should have water over there without this county's permit process. He said there's nobody over there. If they don't have a permit, they shouldn't be connected, and I've been directed to shut it off. 90 days notice. I'm not doing that because of there's life flight. Right. Because, or the and there's also people who living on there we're trying to resolve this and not shut it off but bringing that he's watching the videos so he is correcting when he's done with your when you guys bring stuff up he emails me he sent a big list a letter to the city attorney what a clustered meter request but just a heads up a six inch meter is three hundred eighty thousand dollars an eight inch meter is five hundred thirty thousand dollars it's a lot cheaper putting individual meters in so when you use your request that you want to put a cluster meter and you more than welcome to do that, but it's 80 connections off of ours. So that's why it costs so much. And, and we're, and we're actually here to work to resolve uh, these, these kind of problems because <clears throat> anytime as a public official um, who is fiscally responsible as Bill, Mark and I are, you know, to have write a half a million dollar check, um, you know, we, we, we don't want you to have to, if you don't have to, um, and, and again, this is the one through 100 kind of issues that we're line by line. We need to start at the beginning and, and get to the end. And I do apologize for running over. I just noticed that I did that, but I, I was watching the world clock. I just, I just, I, you got one minute left. As far as <laughs> so are you saying... Are you uh, saying, Mr. Dixon, that we need an eight inch meter because we're going to have to meter our fire flow, something that's not done anywhere else? You don't have a fireworks. 
the, um, this is your request on November 2nd, you brought up, you wanted to do a cluster meter. The response was to the city attorney, if you want to do a cluster meter, you have to have it hydraulically engineered. You chosen to put the fire hydrants on the backside of it, not yourself, but on the backside, no, you should not. We have a tattletale meter, we do not. We read deduct that. You should not have meters or on a fire system. The terminal building, I worked on the fire line with Russ Brown, and the previous airport manager and the new manager sent it to Stoner Bell. It's already designed, it just needs to be put forward. It's a lot cheaper putting a fire line in. Right now, you guys got to go a thousand feet to run a pumper truck. You commented a three inch hydrant's plenty of water for a two inch fire hose. We don't use fire hoses, we use pumper trucks. It's a five inch um, pumper port mm -hmm. extended all the way from Dallas Port Way. A thousand feet, you'd have to run to hook up a fire hose. What is your fire? What is your plan for fire flow? What's your emergency? How do you fight a fire if a plane wrecks? You have no fire system. Well, I mean, that was comments off your meeting on number second that the city um, Department of Health sent to the city attorney. I, if he can forward it to her, I'll forward it forward to me. I was shocked when I read it, but uh, there's a lot of concerns on a cluster meter. And when you, they, it was your minutes that they were watching. That cluster meter will only be used for all of the indoor. When we get around to building that fire system through there, that's it will not be attached to the cluster meter. You don't, the three inch meter is plenty big enough. You could get by with a two inch meter. If you it. don't have an engineering license, that's an engineer that this, I would suggest before we went any further, get the information from the city attorney. At well, the city uh, or, or the engineer, I'll, because I'll we forward Andy Savante's letter to yeah, you. We, the city attorney. we we know we know that this that the real the terminal complex realignment <clears throat> um, engineering is on paper. I mean, obviously, I saw it. I saw it five years ago, actually. I just saw but, it a month ago. But, but no action has been taken on taken on the realignment project um, in order to resolve more so health safety welfare from the <clears throat> from the fire flow issue <clears throat> because there is now of course a concern about no blast wall um, around the fuel farm because that of course is a um, water fire mm -hmm. safety issue that's something we're going to be taking up at the columbia gorge regional airport i've already had discussions over the weekend about that with um regional and community community members and Columbia Gorge Regional Airport current sitting appointed people. And so you, you can kind of see that all of these phone calls are going out and, and we're, we're plugging in in order to be able to pull uh, pull knowledge back to this table. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 100. And again, I have run over. Again, welcome to 2023. I really appreciate your attention. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you at our next scheduled meeting. Thank you. And okay. And Lee, thank you. You know how much I appreciate you. Thanks. Who who is and, and Alicia, congratulations. I am I am just my brain is just rocking. 1950s rocking that you're here. I, I'm really I'm really, really excited. So. Commissioner, um, who's going to set up the agenda for what we're going to deal with each week? Because there's a lot, as you, we all know, there's a lot of issues, many of them small, some of them medium, moderate. Uh, but if we're going to have discussions, we all need to get prepared and be prepared a week in advance. Who's going to set up what, what we're going to deal with? We, we are going to actually issue you commissioners uh, workshop agendas out of our office about the issues that we want to work on because because there's some stuff that's really blowing up as is essentially on fire <clears throat> um, and and we need to take these critical pieces obviously the directive from the department of health is one of them that is that doh directive is something that just has to is a long term there it's a long there's a long term solution to that directive <clears throat> and again pulling our other partners in um, the city of the dalles um, you, us, um, as well as members on the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport, and as well as institutional memory out, out within the public. So one other thing, um, I'm not sure if uh, Prosecutor Cannell told you today, but 
the prosecutor as well as the city attorney are working on the FAA approval letter and we authorize spending a significant amount of money on that outside attorney firm. And so putting that on the agenda, I don't see that as being valuable while those while the attorneys are all working on it. Well, I think it I, I think it is part of the checklist um, <clears throat> because we have yet to have confirmation from either Jonathan Cara or prosecuting attorney Quinnell and or you that the FAA litigator in Denver has been hired. We were told it was going to be done last November. It got delayed. I appreciate the um, appropriation to pay for click attack County half of the litigator. I know we can get that to go through. I know it simply because of the track record that we have with the FAA and our people of institutional memory that are with us. Has Jonathan Cara issued the order to the FAA litigator in Denver to get started? I, can, I have no idea. I, I can tell you. Advised. Well, I can tell you from my email from uh, the city manager this morning that the go ahead for Jonathan has been executed and transmitted. So I don't know if you need any more than that, but I would I would say so we that, should leave that off of our list of things to discuss. While I would like you worked. to copy my office on that for part of our records, please. Much appreciated. OK, I'm really excited for you, Lori. I really, really, truly. I, I, I know. Thank I, you so much. I know. It, it, it's like you're up there beaming. We're going to live energy. this dream one nightmare at a time. Yep. <laughs> Big wheels keep on rolling. You remember. The <laughs> yes. I personally just want to thank Mr. Clark for letting WJ get a word in edgewise. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I figured I'd let him get it off his chest. <laughs> and I, I do appreciate uh, everything that you said about you know, taking this thing one thing at a time and working through it. And I think that's what we need to do. Try anyway. And yeah, I mean, one thing at a time. Don't be overwhelmed by the whole picture because it's fairly large. And not yeah. throw rocks at each other and right. mm -hmm. and uh, try to stick to the... Yep. Yeah. Let's that's, hope. That's I have high hopes. Want. I think we can. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no reason we can't discuss this while the attorney's off doing attorney things. Sure. Right. Um, he might end up with a different opinion than we have, but. Most likely. If they yeah. do, they'll let me know. Right. I agree. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we won't take any more of your time. Perfect. Thanks again. Thanks, guys. Thanks, okay. all of you, for yep. showing up. Oh. With that, I think I'm going to use a little chairman's prerogative to see if Mr. Steve Gilmore has anything for us today. You're not on the agenda, but you're sitting here looking pretty. So, okay. All right. You just continue to sit there and look pretty then. Okay. Um, I would take consent now. Let me get back to it. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve uh, the consent agenda with all six items. My sheet has seven. Did we remove My one? My sheet has seven. Uh, I'm going off of what the top of the thing shows. There's seven. <laughs> seven. Okay. Oh, there's two ones on, online okay. with all seven items. We can do six and then an amendment to the seven. No. We good? Just <laughs> all right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Um, Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda with all seven items. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion pass. Uh, we do not have any bills or payroll this month, apparently. Wow. Uh, we move on to new business. Yeah. 
Anybody else have any new business before us today? What did you say you wanted to discuss? Thank you. Um, take one of those, pass one of those on. Oh. You. What is this? Look at this messy little thing. Um, so before us, I am looking at the document that I prepared. Um, I will add that uh, Commissioner Zoller or Miss Zoller over there did help me prepare this a week ago before she even started in office. So it was all done above board. Uh, and within the law, this document reads, the EOZ Energy Overlay Zone and the Klickitat County Comprehensive Plan do not address large-scale solar farm development or placement. The EOZ Settlement Agreement dated March 15, 2005, did not address large-scale solar farm development or placement. Resolution 10910 dated August 10, 2010, and the public hearings that created it did not address large-scale solar farm development or placement. As most residents of the Goldendale and Centerville Valleys never thought large-scale solar farm development would ever be a possibility in Goldendale and Centerville Valleys, it is the majority of the board's opinion uh, that the citizens' voices have not had a chance to be heard with regards to large, long-range strategic planning in the Goldendale and Centerville Valleys when it comes to large-scale solar farm development and location. For that reason, uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to step down as the chairman of the board and move that the Klickitat County Board of Commissioners create a moratorium on the siting, permitting, and acceptance of permit applications for large-scale solar projects over 1KW in Township Ranges 314, 315, 316, 414, 415, 416, 417, 515, 516, and 517 located within the Klickitat County. With this moratorium, the Klickitat County Commissioners are also directing the Planning Director to assist the Planning Commission to hear from the public through public hearings and to make recommendations that may establish uh, and look that may establish siting and location regulations, including but not limited to large-scale solar siting ordinances and appropriate solar siting locations based on area population density criteria along with national resources and resource lands protections. This may also be done through amendments to the EOZ and to the Klickitat County Comprehensive Plan. Uh, the purpose of this moratorium is to protect the customs, culture, natural resources, and resource lands of the residents of the Goldendale <coughs> and Centerville Valleys and to ensure that the uh, county's planning and future development is consistent with the local community's long range vision for the area. Attached is also two boxes from the Klickitat County map that explains uh, range and townships that were uh, previously mentioned. Um, this document is available to citizens who would like to see it, but there is a motion now on the table. And um, I would second your motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, why did you pick these ranges and townships, uh, may I ask? Uh, because they cover the majority of the Goldendale and Centerville Valleys. Okay, next question. What did you use to come up with 1KW? Uh, the... Uh, Bigger than a home solar unit, smaller than a commercial unit. Are you positive that 1KW is bigger than a home solar unit? Nope. So I'll, I'll be just honest. I, I think, you know, I have a, multiple generators at my house and they put out more than 1KW. Uh, one kilowatt, uh, is not very much in solar panels. I think we have uh, elected officials who have that much electricity on their homes, more than that. Um, I don't see how you can put a moratorium in place that can stop. I understand you're try talking about industrial, but the way you wrote this, it, it definitely covers homes. So I can't support well, that. Well, I would be uh, happy to amend it and remove the 1KW out of the wordage. Uh, with that, I move forward and amend 
uh, this document to remove the one KW out of the wordage. Uh, if I could clarify something, um, stating that there are multiple homes in our county that are using one care less or more in that area and that would harm them in some way. Isn't this document talking more about permits? It's not talking about pre-existing? Correct, this would not affect anything pre-existing. But if removing the one KW makes people feel better, there is now an amendment to the original motion to remove the one KW. So I'm still trying to understand when we institute a moratorium, you have to have a hearing within 60 days. Uh, that hearing has to show the, the harm or whatever that could be done. No, that hearing has to advise you to prepare a finding of fact to right. either continue or to dis, uh, remove the moratorium. And so I'm, I'm reading what you're writing here. And remember, this is the first time this has come in front of me. So. Mm -hmm work with me here um, and you want to have hearings which you have to have on the moratorium um, but then to make recommendations that may establish siting and location regulations so you are so are you are you pushing because the beginning says the energy overlays it um, well that's because the comprehensive plan uh, deals with solar in the golden Dillon uh, or should deal with solar in the Goldendale and Centerville Valleys, of which it doesn't. And the EOZ also designates or, or suppose should be dealing with solar in the Goldendale and, and Centerville Valleys, again, of which it doesn't. So I don't know how you can put an amendment on one without putting an amendment on the other, uh, but maybe you can. Uh, maybe we have a public hearing and this board so chooses again to just remove the moratorium and go forward as planned, and maybe it doesn't. Uh, maybe it's a new year and maybe there's a new vision moving forward. Um, I guess we'll find that out. So I'm just trying to understand like the logical direction if what you're saying is we're going to put a moratorium in place so that we can develop solar ordinances. We're going to have a moratorium in so we can have a public hearing. That public hearing will allow us to have a finding of fact. The finding of fact will tell us whether we're going to remove the moratorium or move forward with the planning commission. Uh, looking at the uh, in working on uh, ordinances and site um, locations based on population density criteria. I, all I'm trying to do is make to have specificity on on we're pricing the moratorium so that we can have a hearing on whether and and the hearing would be whether to, that hearing is to keep the moratorium in place to write findings of fact. But then is your goal to open the EOZ or is your goal to write a um, solar siting ordinance for this location? I don't have a goal up to and including nothing limiting whatever the public body of the planning commission deems fit to make a request to the board of commissioners on whether they just want to write ordinances, whether they want to put site specific locations or whether they want to do nothing, they will make a recommendation to this board. Uh, and this board will then act on that recommendation. I am not um, making decisions for them. I am putting it in their hands to look at these things, but not limited to these things. Okay, so my next question, uh, have you taken this through legal counsel to ensure that what we, are, what we are proposing with this moratorium is not arbitrary and capricious with regards to what townships there are? That would be up to whoever's personal opinion on whether it's arbitrary or capricious. And no, I have not taken it through legal counsel. Okay. Do you think it, we should no. ask legal counsel? No. You're more than welcome to. But am I, if you're asking me to hold off and pull my motion uh, and give the solar company a chance to throw a permit out tomorrow, why I'm getting legal counsel, the answer is no. I will not remove my motion and I will not remove my amendment. I guess, so, just from my perspective, um, 
everything we look at is liability. And if we were setting a solar moratorium over the whole county, I think you would have one say there, and it, it's, it applies to everyone. Picking a select area, um, I would say could make sense because of whatever I found in this thing, which I think, did you write this? You can't see that part, Jake, just let me come up. Yeah, let me know if you wrote that. I just came across it in my new desk. And this is the one that you took a picture of some months ago that uh, had been passed on to me and I done my best work to verify it. And, uh, truly it's not completely up to date and I would not swear to its absolute correctness. Okay. But even if it's 2000 acres off, it's still huge. Okay. Thank you. This piece has come back into play. That one's on dormant. That one's on dormant. That one's on dormant until transmission lines increase. There's actually more over this way, less over that way. Well, thank you. You can have this too, sir. It should have the map in there that covers over the top of that map to show you that those are all included. Okay. Well, I'm only asking the questions because it's pretty obvious that you both worked this out last week, and so there's an agreement on this. Uh, my my question and my advice would be that that we send something of this magnitude to legal counsel so that we know if we're creating legal jeopardy for for the county. Um, but hearing that you don't want to, um, I'll just have... No, it's not that I don't want to. I don't want to pull the motion and wait for legal counsel to give me an opinion because the wait time could put thousands of residents in jeopardy. <clears throat> well, I would, get, I, would, I would say usually filling an application out for something this large is not something somebody can just sneak through in a week. I mean, this has been the fear for since, well, our first day in office and before, mm -hmm. and nothing's been applied for yet. Um, I think that the planning commission and the public hearing could answer a lot of the questions about siding as well. I don't think it has to necessarily look like this is a done deal. Yes, it fits right there, but what happens when it gets to their table and they say, no, there's other places at risk. Can those be added <coughs> later? Um, I think that's an open door. Okay. At least this starts the ball rolling so we can have meetings we've never been able to have. I would agree. It says not limited to, so they can come up with whatever they come up with based off what they hear from the citizens having an input. I will say if this is, uh, if we go through another commissioner meeting uh, on the moratorium where we have a public hearing and there's 23 people that come out and they testify, um, I don't know that that necessarily is bad because it will still be my push to go to the planning commission. Uh, but during the planning commission hearings, I would certainly hope that all the people that I actually hear from mm -hmm. in this community uh, that don't want solar in their valley, they better show up. Because if they don't and it goes through, don't blame me. I've tried and tried and tried. You're now blaming yourself. So this is their last chance to say something. Uh, with that, there is a motion on the floor. There's a, a motion for an amendment to that motion, which um, I guess I will ask you both if there's any more debate before I move the question. Do you feel it would be safer to make it so that it's, I'm looking at what this shows and make it anything west of Rock Creek. I'm trying to limit the potential legal liability for the county. And I'm sure we could hear from Ms. Bosque who would say, why doesn't it cover the Houston Valley? Um, I'm just trying to understand. I'm not interested in West of Rock Creek. Because again, if they want to put solar panels up on top of the windmill hill, that's not right next to somebody's house. If they want to put solar panels down at the old aluminum smelter, that it's not next to somebody's house. You're not, you know, using valuable farmland. You're not encroaching on somebody's view shed. You're not moving it 300 feet from their fence line of or of the actual house itself. Um, that that to me is the difference. Not that solar is bad. I'm fine with solar in the Bickleton area out in the tumbleweeds. It's a great place. 
I'd be fine with solar on top of the windmill hill up there. I'd be fine with solar at the aluminum plant. Um, I think when you stick it in areas that are that close to a city and that's surrounded by population, you're screwing up. Um, and I think this community has screwed up for some time on this matter and it's still before us. So would I amend it to be west of Rock Creek? The answer is no. Well, and these, these are prime examples, I believe. And then the conversations can go further. This opens your door. We have a lot of other policy documents that our commissioners of the past have signed that we've always followed, we've always honored. And leaving this wide open is inadverse to those policy documents as well. Uh, and they aren't just policy documents that are semi sort of policy. They were actually adopted by our county and signed by our commissioners. And those those haven't even been brought to the table ever or discussed with these proposals. They've been ignored pretty much. But this this process would open it back up so we could have all those documents at the table and see which documents do we need to amend? Where do these belong? Um, and really get a full array of things that we need to be working on rather than just a quick look and throw it out there and we have unintended consequences from that. As well as we're talking about suit because of where we picked for some sightings that are crucial. If you move forward in a way you have potential litigation just as bigger, bigger on the other way, on many different fronts. True. Okay, so you're, can you read your amended motion out loud? Because I'm looking if you take the, just the word one KW out, it might mean something different. Sorry, I apologize. All right, I'm, my, I'm gonna amend my amendment. And the one KW is now gonna say one acre. You show me a, somebody's personal solar farm that they're using one acre of land to power their house. Um, I can make it 10 acres if it makes it better for you, but I think we'll stick with one acre. Is one acre amenable if I do one acre or do you? think a better number would be in place there. Well, I personally lived with solar and ran quite a bit with it, and I certainly didn't need anything near an acre. It was a rooftop on my inverter building. Um, so one acre is very generous. One acre would be clean. Okay. So I would amend my uh, uh, motion uh, to change the wording to one acre. And if that's the case, I would need a motion to approve the amendment before we hear the main motion. I can approve that amendment. I would step down and second the approval of the amendment. Uh, having a motion and a second on the amendment. First, we will vote on the amendment, then we'll vote on the main motion. All those in favor, favor of approving the amendment and changing one KW to one acre say yes, yes, yay, whatever you want to do. Yes. Yes. No answer. Two, two yes, one no answer. Now we'll move to the main motion for the moratorium. Uh, there's been a motion, or there's been a motion on the table in a second. Uh, all those in favor of approving the moratorium with the amendment, say aye. 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 And Nay, a, not without discussion with the prosecuting attorney. Okay. Two ayes and a nay. Motion passes. Um, now we move forward. The staff wants you to read the full motion with all those amendments and everything. I gave her a copy. Okay. Um, dun -dun 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 -dun. Uh, 
business stuff do you guys want to go through uh what you would like to see out of the workshop strategic planning what you would like to see in departments moving forward uh working on things like short-term rental stuff um any interest in discussing any of that fun stuff uh i would say since we just passed a moratorium um, and that is going to be going in front of the planning commission based on what you well likely based on the findings of fact um, we need to get the planning commission filled and that needs to be a priority because i know one planning commissioner just stepped up <laughs> yeah i would say we need to get the planning commission filled we'd also need to get the planning commission trained mm -hmm. So I think that's a twofold statement and hopefully both those things can happen shortly. So have we put anything in the newspaper for asking for planning commission members? I believe there is an application on file. I, yeah, I believe there was an application process opened and that is ended now. Any of you accepted oh, it's applications? Always it's, always oh, it's always open. open. Okay. It's always oh, when was the last time we put it in the paper? Uh, I don't know that we've ever put it in the paper. Even when we first created it, I don't think it ever went to the paper. I know I posted it online uh, in, in Facebook and whatnot like that, but I don't know that it's ever been posted in the paper. Okay, so I, I would say that, you know, it's been difficult to find application applicants for many of these positions for many of these different boards. And it'd be, uh, I would move, uh, I guess I would move that we put an ad in the local paper of record asking for um, people who would like to volunteer and putting a list of all of the open positions um, that are currently open for all the different boards. Are you saying not appoint anybody to the planning commission until you get that? I mean, you, I, I guess for clarification, you didn't say don't appoint anybody. You just said make a posting in the paper. Well, and this is not just the planning commission. This is all right. of them. Right. But you didn't say not appoint anybody. You just I, said I post didn't, that was not my paper. motion, sir. Um, all right, I'm just asking clarification to the question, so I understand now. Not hearing a second. Did not hear a second. Oh. Are you going or um, not going? Sure. How soon would we, I have, can I still do the discussion? If, if you second it, then we can have I was going to say there's sure. no discussion I will, I will second. second it. Okay, yeah. got it. Now there's discussion. Okay. How soon would that be going in? Uh, Lee? Well, I need to review our applications and what I don't believe there's a whole lot of positions that are open other than the ones that have been difficult. I believe there's only one position and and district one i say you've had district one open for some time district two is new and there's an applicant for that already right but we have some other boards that are right i would need to yeah. review that and haven't had an opportunity since we have an application for a planning commission can we move forward with appointing and looking at applications that we already have so we get them up to speed quicker get them functioning quicker and then I would say whether we post something in the paper or not, it doesn't stop someone from uh, making a motion for an appointment and it wouldn't stop anybody from making a second to an appointment okay. just because there's something going to be in the paper. I had a new one that was received maybe last, late last week. It's been posted on your share drive and that could be prepared for the consent agenda for your consideration next week. See okay. that? Is this for? Yes. Commissioner Solar's former spot. See, I'm not seeing that on mine. I, I just went looking for it and I didn't see it. Okay, shared drive. BOCC appointment. I keep on planning commission and I see. It's on your, it's on your shared drive, not on your Google Drive. Huh? Oh, I look I at that. my share as far as I'm concerned is Google. I'm not smart well, enough to go around the other way. Share drive? 
I'm not smart enough. To Do we have access to that? We certainly do, sir. It's if it's not in the G drive. So you have it in. Trouble. It's not in the BOCC file. It's in the data file. Is what you're saying? Commissioner's data. I know. I just can't keep up. Data. We'll get there. It's fine. Data. AP appointments. Appointments. Uh, Planning commission. Uh, Whoa. I was going to say, wow, that's a lot of stuff in there. That's due by date. 12 7. I, it's not in data appointments planning commission. No, it's not in there. It's somewhere. I know there's one, though. It was sent to you. I saw it. Thank you. How'd you see it? I'm special. Oh. Well, I didn't see it. I know of it. Let's just clarify it that way. I did not see it. I thought there's a With that, we are still in discussion for the motion to post the openings in the paper. I wouldn't, uh, my personal opinion, I don't have a problem with posting the open positions in the paper. I feel that it potentially could be a waste of money because it's like pulling teeth to get anybody to sit on any board, uh, even ones that are super important. Uh, but being that it could be a waste of money, I still think it's probably a good idea that we do it. Um, so I would be in favor of doing it, but I would also not be in favor of holding up any other potential appointments that we currently have. Uh, if the commissioner in that district felt strongly enough about appointing that person, I would feel strongly enough about seconding the motion for that person. Um, and that's all I discuss, discussion I have on the motion to uh, post it in the paper, post our open, all of our open positions in the paper. Yeah, we've got a lodging tax advisory position. Um, I've come up with a couple for that one and they, um, I was trying. They don't get accepted. We also have a solid waste advisory committee position open, conservancy board position. There's a few. And if uh, the application that is filed that is for the District 2 position, um, I am comfortable with that application. I would be glad to make a motion to accept that person to planning commission to get them moving. Um, and I don't know if that's appropriate that I do um, it that way. Not appropriate at this time because we're in the middle of debate on the previous motion to uh, have the paper publish okay. uh, openings, but when we're done with this motion, if somebody wanted to make a new one about any topic, they could. Okay. Is there any other discussion on um, posting all of our board openings or appointment openings to the paper? Um, I would just, for discussion purposes, I think because a lot of uh, appointments run out at the end of uh, the new year, or at the end of the calendar year, we need to check with all those people to see if they're even interested in serving because when we took these positions two years ago, we created this new way of appointing people to these boards that was not was a, was an attempt to not seem to be favoritism or anything else. Um, and so I want to make sure that we're following that process. I, I would agree with that because I also want to look into the attendance of the people that sit on these boards because we did have an attendance rule in that policy. Uh, and I will be coming back to this board with people who maybe have uh, not had the best attendance to live up to our policy. So I would agree. With that, we have a motion and a second before, sorry, clerk. I was gonna say, I emailed it to you, the latest. Okay. On ShareDrive. Perfect. Okay. okay. The Google I'm Drive. Seeing it in email, so. um, we have a motion in a second before us to have the clerk um, reach out to the newspaper and post all the open board assignments um, to the public to see if we can retain any interest. Um, all those in favor of doing so, say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Have we seen it yet? Uh, it's on the shared drive now. Okay. 
appointment applications to Planning Commission. Um, well, looky there. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's there. So, I would like to entertain a motion to appoint Mr. Barda to Planning Commission for District 2. I think he'd be a great asset. Okay, thank you for your motion. Do we have a second? Um, question. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I will second the motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the matter? Yes. Okay. Uh, Dave Barda is in District 2. Um, is Mr. Russell Hansen, Elias Sexton, Frank Huey, and Matt Childs um, in District 2 as well? Are all those District 2? Um, let's go at a different angle. Matt Childs is a District 1. He sits on the Board of Adjustments. He's a currently. District 1? Oh, sorry, District 3. Okay. He's he's my district, and he currently sits on the board of adjustments. Yep, I know that. Uh, Frank Huey is in District Two, but he currently sits on the Veterans Advisory Committee. Um, I don't know about the Elena Sexton. Oh, it says White Salmon Wash. Oh, Dallasport. What? Hmm. Well, there you go. Well, it says Dallasport, and it says White Salmon. So, well, that either one of them, yeah. Okay, so that will, well, unless it's Dallasport, that could be District 2. So potentially, yes, that one, that one would be potentially a District 2 okay. that doesn't sit on another board. And then Russ Hansen uh, sits on the Civil Service Commission, I believe. Um, so that one definitely is another board as well. So of the ones you've chosen, this Elise Sexton is the only one that I do not believe sits on okay. a board already. Okay. Any further discussion? I would like to say thank you to Mr. Barda for volunteering to serve on the Planning Commission. I know how tireless you work and how much you care. Um, I'm happy to vote on this. Okay. Hearing no further discussion. Uh, there's a motion and a second to appoint Mr. David Barda to the Planning Commission. All those in favor of the appointment, say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. I'm sorry for your loss, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You've done it now. I, I guess my real question is, did Mr. Barda turn in that application or did somebody else write it and turn it in for it? Well, no, he turned it in and then we let him out of the trunk of the car. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. This is all fun new business stuff. What other new business trouble can we get into? Any other ideas by anybody or do we want to hold off some fun for a future date? Huh? Um, <laughs> I guess my question would be is with our conversation earlier with do we want to <sighs> sorry I signed as chairman I asked it honorary out. for the hour I asked it out. I don't know that I ever reclaimed the chairmanship after I stepped down to make the motion tell you the truth I know I stepped down, but I don't know you, if I ever get to well, come back. Well, when again. you step down and second it, you automatically step back. Step up. right back up yeah, again? According to Roberts. I guess, never mind. We'll just see how it goes uh -huh. on Thursday. I was going to say, do we want to, number one, uh, have the prosecuting attorney present for these discussions with the... I would like the prosecuting attorney present for every discussion all the time, but I will take whatever I can get. Okay, do we want to invite the prosecuting attorney for the discussions with the water district? Um, yeah, I mean, it's as far as I'm concerned, it's a standing invitation to anywhere I am. <laughs> I see, this one has me as chairman. There you go. I'm going to X out the chair. Okay, um, do you guys have anything else? Um, other things that I think I want to talk about as we move along. 
um, the possibility of monthly town halls working our way around the county. So say one month you're in Dallasport, one month you're in Lyle, one month you're in Glenwood, one month you're mm -hmm. um, wherever. I think my mic just cut out on me. Um, to answer citizens' questions about things as irrelevant as do we recycle baling twine? Uh, believe it or not, that was a hot topic question the other day. Um, so I'd like to have that discussion as we move forward. I would also like to potentially set up email notification lists like we do with 911 that people can sign on to get what the commissioners would then create as a monthly newsletter uh, that they can post on Facebook to talk about what we've done in the last month since we don't get a lot of airing in the local paper. Um, I think we've already talked about creating policy resolutions that departments and elected must ask for and reserve approval from the county commissioners in order to ask for state or federal representatives for appropriations and or grant funding. So can we will have can that you discussion. Can say that one more time? Read that out. Uh, create a county policy yeah. or resolution that departments and elected must ask and receive approval from the county commissioners in order to ask for state or federal uh, appropriations or grants. In other words, get the okay before you go chase the funding and then tell me I have to try to fund the other half of it. Uh, we need to have that discussion. Uh, we already kind of talked about the Dallasport wastewater rate increase. I want to bring back up the legalized truck potable water. Uh, we're working on Title 12 road standards and that will continue. Short term rentals is on here. Bird bands, it's already been kind of brought up. Uh, I do want to bring up the possibility or discussion of revisiting ADU sizing uh, and location expansion uh, to see if there would be any interest. Uh, website upgrade that I know we were available to have a year ago or more. Um, and also look at possible um, contracts or uh, negotiation with local auto repair companies to limit the costs uh, and you potentially use public works to limit the cost of auto repair. Um, what about a Pocatac County Good Neighbor Guide codes and standards book? That was something that we were working on at the same time back in 2020. Yeah, that makes sense. I remember that now. I totally forgot about that until you mentioned it. Right. But yeah, when we when we go through a work job, my plan is to, if each one of the commissioners brings forward a list of things you want to do, um, I don't know, let's just say public works, and you might have Title 12 road standards, you might have Dallasport uh, wastewater rates, you might have mill cleanup, you might have something else, and we can all discuss it, we can set priorities, and at least give a timeline for the first project. Hey, here's, here's your list that we want to see done this year give us a timeline on the first project so we can actually uh, yeah. get some of this stuff moving forward. I think we, we, we're going to have to be very cognizant with a new board, new direction. It's really easy to swamp directors. That's why I would like it. We have all have a discussion about each item for each department um, so that we can give them guidance on what thing we want them working on more than anything else. Okay. Um, so that they're not spinning their wheels on something that is like number four on our list. Um, and that discussion, so hopefully everybody brings something or anything they have future plans for um, that would like to speak about. And that's all I have. Anybody else have anything fun and exciting that they'd like to bring up? I think we've I'm done some damage for the day. I'm excited about um, Mr. Christopher's talking about um, organizing the planning through workshops, knowing ahead where the departments are going. Uh, strategic planning was really on my radar coming into this position. Um, getting the county back to a great working order, a happy working place, everybody working and cooperating together, being on the same page. Um, we are going to have a discussion with another county commissioner that's already been through strategic planning uh, mid-January, I think the 24th, we're going to have a Zoom uh, with Lisa Janicki from Skagit County. Oh. And they've actually done the strategic planning and she couldn't say enough about what it done for their county. And they start with the electeds uh, to kind of meld your relationships and see how y'all work together and 
and uh, how it all functions and then wrap in the departments under that. So I really have hopes that once we sit down with her that our county can entertain that and go ahead and move forward with strategic planning. And along with that, what that does is give Jen a chance to come in and Rob for strategic planning to move with us with that budget too. Makes sense, a five-year plan, so we all know where we're going, what we're doing, and what money has to be applied. So I like that. I like strategic planning. Um, uh, the um, idea that we would do uh, a report of the work we're doing, uh, especially good things, and enter it to a Facebook page so that all the people have access to it. I would like to entertain also submitting that to the paper so we create a different relationship with the paper. Uh, maybe once every two weeks, once a month as a news brief from the Klickitat County Commissioners to the newspaper. So we start hitting everybody that we do a lot of work. We do a lot of good work. Um, sometimes people don't know how busy commissioners, commissioners are or what's happening in their county that they want to get involved in. You know, that's another place that in our monthly update we could put in the newspaper. We have boards open, get a hold of us. We need people to volunteer and come help help design their county. See and things that move. That's me. I think most people have no idea what we do, what no. we have done, what we've accomplished. There's no news mm -hmm. media out there to cover it. Mm -hmm. um, your work on the mental health thing. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you need a damn parade. Uh, throwing in your name on that issue in the fact that there's no media coverage is absolutely shameful, but um, Yeah, we, we you know we'll they, work on that. If, if we can be our own public Presence I think the the citizenry can actually hear what we've done and what we've accomplished and and um, be as proud as I Think we should be yeah, and it won't so. be such a void They'll They'll actually see that things are going on um, the uh, Wolf Advisory Group will be in town tomorrow and Wednesday, or Wednesday and Thursday for two meetings. And I think we've kind of bounced this conversation off of Commissioner um, Christopher, and we kind of had the conversation that we all three have hit on that for our constituents, that it's a concern. And there's people in each one of our districts that has concern, and they have a very functioning board with WDFW and we happen to be the place that they're landing in the next two days to explain interactions between cattle ranchers and wolves. What and time frame are they doing that meeting? Sorry. It what was time? an all day meeting and I don't have the time on that. Oh, but wow. both of those were all day, so they were pretty lengthy meetings. Um I here, I'm assuming? Pardon me? Are they doing it here? Are they they are at the okay. Grange again. Oh, they're at the Grange. I can find it and get it to you okay. later if you don't find it. I was going to say, in Fort Sam in meetings tomorrow, and then I have to head up to do legislative in Olympia the next day. So. so maybe one of us could trade off and cover parts of it. What I found last month, I did attend the meeting that was held. Um, it pertained a lot to the ranchers and, and things going on with them, training sessions, but it didn't have a lot to touch the county and our work. The only thing that I heard in there was at some point in time, there is federal pass through money that comes. And if there is a documented kill, you could apply and have the money come back. And that would be a position for the county. We could help have that place where the money drops, just like we do salmon recovery or one of those. We could hold that. And in Oregon, it is dropped at the county. Having went to the previous Wolf meeting, but that was, that was put on by them. Mm -hmm. That wasn't put on by the WAG. Mm -hmm. Would you want to do the WAG meeting? And and you should be able to get the agenda online of what, what was yes. pertained to us. Do yeah. you want to hit that? Sure. And then give us a, an update on what happened next week? Sure. And I have a couple of meetings tomorrow uh, that I could maybe share that time with Mr. Christopher, Commissioner Christopher, if he's got, um, if he'll be available. Or I can just look at that agenda and make sure I'm back for what might pertain to us. Yeah. And then I'll update you next week. Yeah. Okay. That's the most important part. Tomorrow, I don't know how much time I'm going to have in tomorrow, to tell you the yeah. truth, but whatever time I do have, I plan on being there. But then if I duck out, I mean, I can't commit how much time. No, that's fine. I mean, it could be one hour in the middle of some random time. I'll see what I can do with my meetings. And then but I do think it's important to um, 
Oops. Sorry. Well, for me to show, be... I was going to say, you know, I'm talking back there and nobody can hear me. Um, to, um, I was going to say show support, uh, but it's more not support for wolves. It's more show support for locals, yeah. uh, ranchers, and not um, not the rest of it. I mean, I pretty much know how the meeting's going to go, but. Well, and I haven't heard in any of these conversations yet, and we're a highly recreated county. I haven't heard anything about discussions about wolves and recreation. And so there's also a webinar. Uh, the WAG meeting has a webinar. Okay. So, um, okay. Let's see what the agenda says. 8.30. DFW updates. How hard is it to find the website link? Uh, just www wolf advisory group, then go to calendar. The wagon fish and wildlife commission. Uh, Thursday opening wolf ungulate interactions. Was that nine to three, Jake? I think. Uh, so Thursdays eight thirty to one thirty, but it's. It's wolf ungulate interaction, so that's more because I remember I used to go to the meetings, mm -hmm. um, and so one day was like more high level. One day is like getting down into the um, the nitty gritty for you know like uh, agency staff. I don't see a, a whole lot on Thursday. I say I don't think there's much for us other than uh, holding the hand and supporting the, the local rancher. There's not going to be much in there than us. <laughs> looking educational or mm -hmm. yeah. um, indoctrinatable. So one o'clock and 10 o'clock. Um, yeah. Okay. There was a lot of talking that went on to those meetings and not a lot that got done. Mm -hmm. uh, are you, what time's your meetings tomorrow? I'd have to go back and look. Okay. It, it was one that was a pre-schedule that I was asked, and I'd said yes, but I can always okay. change Okay. Well, if you that. can't do the, the 10 o'clock or the 1 o'clock, uh, okay. just let me know, and I'll try to log in for it. No, I'll make it work. Did you see this agenda yet? Yes, I've looked at it once. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'll go back and comb through it and make sure. Oh. Your email finally came through to me. Any other um, fun stuff before we move on? Any other board pending or um, any staff have any report or anything they want to give us before we close? I'm not hearing it. Um, with that, I guess I will, uh, I do want to go into an executive session uh for five minutes with accordance of rcw 42.30-110 uh looks like print l print d um to uh review negotiation of performance of public bid contracts when public knowledge regarding such consideration would cause the likelihood of increased costs uh issues of a general nature will be discussed in open session uh, again, we'll just need five minutes. This is for uh, solid waste, um, potential solid waste contract amendment, um, knowledge sharing, five minutes. Uh, do you let everybody know we're not going to have anything and we're going to close oh, soon? Oh, we can do that too, yeah. There should not be anything afterwards and we should not be taking any action. Uh, we won't be taking any action in executive, but we should not be taking any action afterwards either. And when we come back, we will just be uh, adjourning until next week.